the only thing I need help for me is if you all can mute yourselves, that would be great. Grace and peace to you friends and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Warren. I'm so glad you all are here today and we welcome you whether you are watching here on Zoom or if you are on Facebook Live or if you are watching later on YouTube, you are so welcome with us today. Our liturgist today uh, is from New Life Presbyterian Church, our friends at New Life and his name is Stan Yapst. And Stan, if you could uh, just come and introduce yourself and share where God has met you this week. Share just a brief word about where God has met you this week. Oops, Stan, if you wanna unmute yourself. Okay, 
I'm back. Um, I, I think it's when I was singing on the choir and, and playing chimes that, you know, whatever music ability I had, I got to share with everybody. And that, I, and that that's what I think of most. And I just hope we can get back there again. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for helping to lead us in worship today. We also have another few special guests um, I see one of them with us now, <laughs> our Transitional General Presbyter, Reverend Dr. Flo Barbie Watkins. Flo, thank you so much for joining us today. Flo, if you would want to just um, share a word of welcome and say where God has met you this week. Indeed, it is good to be with you, church family. Uh, I bring you greetings from the 75 congregations in the Presbytery of Detroit. God has met me this week through friendship. Uh, one of my, I will say, lifelong friends we met in college is visiting with me this weekend to continue to help me get settled. And just her mere presence and friendship for 30 plus years uh, just brings me joy. And I see uh, the light of Christ in her as she extends herself uh, to me, even in the midst of cold and frigid uh, weather, as she is from Atlanta and it's not so cold there. But God is definitely present in this friendship and I love her dearly. Thank you. Welcome. And I don't see our other guest at the moment, but we'll introduce him when he shows up. Friends, let us turn our hearts and minds now to the worship of God. I'd invite you as we begin this series again and again for our Lenten season, I'd invite you as we watch this video to perhaps write in the comments or in the chat where God has met you this past week. God never begins letters with the words, I hope this finds you well, for those words imply distance. Instead, God begins God's letters to you with the words, remember when? Beloved child, remember when we dipped our toes into the water? Remember when we dove right in? Remember when the ice cream dripped down our hands and the cicadas sang their song and the seasons changed and the days were long? Remember when we fell in love and the world was new? Remember when our heart was broken? Remember the tears? Remember the long nights. Remember when we laughed again and the sound surprised us. Remember when we marched in the street. Remember when we cast our vote. Remember when we believed in hope. Remember when? I do. That's what God's letters say. So on this day and every day to come, Remember God is meeting you. If you look back, you might remember when. I'd invite Stan to lead us in our call to worship. God meets us in the night, before the sun rises, before the wound heals, before there are answers, before there is closure. God meets us in the light, where joy is ever present, where laughter is contagious, where flowers bloom from, from cracks in the sidewalk, and where people gather around the table. God meets us at the threshold, at the edge of the water, at the beginning of the water, at, at the beginning of the wilderness, at the start of something new, on the edge of faith. And if God meets us in all these places, then surely God meets us in heaven, staying with us through the wilderness. We are not alone. God is all around. Let us worship the God of the here and now. 
Amen. Our hymn of praise is God is here. Friends, God's bow has been hung in the clouds, a unilateral disarmament in spite of our sin. God remains faithful to the covenant of steadfast love, even when we are unfaithful. Without fear, then, we confess our sins. God, who meets us where we are, there is nowhere we can go that you are not. You were with Jesus at his baptism. You were with him in the wilderness, and even in between, you were there saying aloud, this is my beloved. We know that you are with us too, in the good, the bad, and everything in between. But so often we act like, like we are alone. Instead of coming to you with our hurt, we hold it in or cast it onto others. Instead of coming to you with our joy, we credit ourselves and offer you nothing? How can we long for a deeper relationship with you while living like you are nowhere to be found? Forgive our self-centered ways. Remind us that in every breath, in every step, you are there. You are the God who meets us where we are. Amen. Friends, as Noah and his family were brought safely through the flood onto dry ground, so in baptismal waters we are brought from death into new life in Christ. Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, forgives us 
and reconciles us and all things in heaven and on earth. Thanks be to God for this good news. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Friends, I'd invite you to share a sign of peace in the comments or chat or unmute. Peace, peace everybody. Peace to everybody. Peace to everybody. Peace to everybody. Peace to all. Peace to all. Peace. Peace and God bless you. And I'd invite you to mute yourselves back and for any children to come uh, closer to the screen a little bit, we're going to have a fun time with children. Uh, and Kevin, if you could spotlight me, that would be great. So the people on Facebook can see well. So I'm wondering if you have in this last year, maybe learned something new or started something new. One of the things that I've done in this time is I started this mixed martial arts class. So in the morning, um, it just has felt so good to, to punch and kick and have some fun moving to music. Um, but when I first started, it was really hard and it looked like my arms and legs were just kind of flapping all over the place. But I practiced a lot and got better. So now my moves are a little more coordinated. I wonder if there is something new that you have started, uh, maybe in the last few months or year. Does anyone want to share? Flo, Dr. Flo, have you started anything new in this last year? <laughs> I started multiplication. Oh, multiplication. Is that Kate? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Kate, that is really hard. Was it really hard to start at the beginning or did you get it right away? Um, it was tricky. It was tricky, yeah, yeah. But I know you're working at it, you're really smart. I'm sure you're gonna learn it real quick. Anyone else have been learning something new? Okay, well, today is the first Sunday in Lent and Lent is a season when we think about what we can uh, do to be better people and follow Jesus. And sometimes we even give something up or start doing something new that will help us to follow Jesus more closely. And starting something new can be scary or hard, uh, but we don't do it alone, right? God is with us. God doesn't wait for us to be perfect and to get it all right, but meets us right where we are with my arms flapping and flailing. <laughs> and when Jesus started telling the good news that heaven was near, God was there from the beginning. God was there when Jesus was baptized. God was there when Jesus was in the wilderness. And God was there when Jesus started his ministry. And God is with us too, no matter where we are in our lives. Now at, oh, Flo started singing hymns while planking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so at the beginning of the service, we heard a poem about where God meets us. And that poem didn't rhyme, but sometimes it's fun when poems rhyme. So I thought we could make a poem together about where God meets us. So if I say, so what, what we're going to do, I'm going to say a line and then you try to come up with a line that rhymes with it. Okay. It's going to, says, God is with me in my room. 
So you can write in the comments or just say it out loud. We might say, what, what could you say that rhymes with room? God is with me in my room. God is with me when I'm on Zoom. Right? I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> God is with me when I go boom. That's what Glenn I just said. Boom. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. That was our practice. Okay. God is with me near or far. Who's got a good rhyme for that? God is with me near or far. God is with me in the car. Yes. Nice. Anyone else? God is with me wherever we are, even looking at the stars. Good. Okay. God is with me when I fall. Anyone? God is with me when I call. Nice. I love it. Cool. God helps me crawl. <laughs> nice. God is with me when I rise. Anyone got, God is with me when I rise. God is with me when I open my eyes. When we eat French fries. When we eat French fries. Awesome. Awesome. I love, I love our prayer together. So maybe we can be thinking about this week. We can think and rhyme about where God is with us. So let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for meeting me exactly where I am. I know that you are always with me no matter where I go. In Jesus' name, amen. Stan, I'd invite you to lead us in our prayer for illumination. Okay. Holy God, if I am honest, faith often feels like water in my hands. No matter how hard I try to hold on to it, some of it always slips through, like droplets of truth running down my wrist, back towards my heart. This human inability to hold on to you uh -oh, uh, leaves, me want, uh, leaves me thirsty for more. So as we prepare to read the scripture, I pray, I pray that once again, you would meet us here. Meet us in our hope and our heartache. Meet us in our fear and our joy. Meet us in our cupped hands and clenched fists. And even if the water keeps running and we do not have a sky party moment of clarity or a tangible sense that you are near, even if we do not hear the words, this is my beloved, ringing in, ringing in our ears, we will trust that you are near always and forever meeting us here, running toward our hearts. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Amen. As Stan reads the Genesis passage, I'd invite for you to meditate on this art by Hannah Garrity. <clears throat> okay. Ready for the Old Testament? Okay. This is from... Genesis 9, starting at verse 8. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, As for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you. Of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth, Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall, be there, shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the, cl in the cloud 
and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from Mark, the first chapter, verses 9 to 15. Let us again listen for God's word to us today. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those of us who uh, have a Facebook account, I imagine in the next few weeks, the memories that pop up in our feed from this time last year will start uh, stirring some emotions. That time right before our pre-pandemic innocence was lost. Those first few weeks, we all thought naively this would be over soon. That time before we lost loved ones from this disease or suffered ourselves with illness. Here at First Church, we were just about to start a Lenten series by Sanctified Art called Wilderness. And that theme became somewhat more than a metaphor as we were suddenly thrust into an all new way of doing church and life in general. We were quite literally in our own wilderness. And as I started thinking about Lent 2021, my heart sunk a bit in the grief and realization that we have been in a kind of endless Lent this whole past year. And here we are around at the start of another actual Lenten season. I don't know about you, but I am kind of over Lent and it has only just actually started. I needed something to help kickstart my planning and so I turned to the beautiful and inspiring work of a sanctified art once again and then I saw what their theme was this year again and again. And on first glance I was not so thrilled. Again and again. That sounds like waking up every day this past year. Again and again. Keeping apart from those I love. Again and again, trying to figure out how to keep two active boys entertained or interested in their schoolwork from home. Again and again, doing dishes. Oh, the dishes or the laundry or cleaning the house whose walls I am tired of seeing, though at the same time, extremely grateful for. Again and again, watching the news that is overwhelming with the ways humans keep messing up. Again and again. I got that theme down this year all too well, thank you very much. But as I laid aside my tiredness and cynicism and leaned in a little closer to the scripture and themes and rhythms that the season of Lent always gives us, I began to catch on and maybe even find some hope in this phrase again and again. You see, this is the season that we remember and rediscover that in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our destructive patterns, in the midst of our daily grind, in the midst of our ashes, it is precisely there that God meets us again and again. Meeting us in floods and rainbows, meeting us in the waters of baptism, 
meeting us in the wilderness of temptation and trials, meeting us when we proclaim hard and beautiful truths, meeting us again and again. The story of scripture is the story of God meeting God's people again and again. And wow, do we need the full breadth of that story this year in this time. The story that we focus in on each year on the first Sunday in Lent is always Jesus's temptation in the wilderness. Mark records this as he does nearly everything else at breakneck speed, two verses. The 40 days in the wilderness go by in one verse, not many details. A funny play on time by Mark, probably perfect for us this year where time has felt like a jumbled mess as we've stumbled through our own wildernesses. Now to the waters of baptism and belovedness, the spirit immediately drives Jesus out into the wilderness. And then in just a few short verses, Jesus's ministry begins in Galilee and in the aftermath of John's arrest. It is a time of intense change and transformation for Jesus, which Mark's gospel helps make abundantly clear. When I read this story and look back on my own life and the lives of communities of which I've been a part. There's a pattern of God meeting God's people when they are on the edge of something new. Some call this liminal space, the threshold of a new way of being, a new identity, of becoming a part of a new community. This liminal space, this time of having one foot in a past world, but being pulled or dragged or maybe even walking ourselves into the next world. This liminal space is ripe for God's powerful presence. Or maybe it's a time when we are just more open to signs of God's presence. And friends, we are in this liminal space right now in so many ways. After almost a year of life in a pandemic, we have now had two months of people being vaccinated and numbers have steadily been decreasing, even as we quickly approach half a million deaths. We have begun to see a light at the end of the tunnel, but the cracks in the system that this whole year exposed have us wondering if we do indeed want to go back to the normal that was, or if we need to find a new way forward. Our country's deep wound and sin of racism has been exposed once again in terribly dramatic ways this past year. We are in the liminal space of deciding whether or not we have the courage to see and speak about painful truths and move forward with justice and reconciliation. We are in this liminal time of snow melting as we joyfully anticipate spring And yet extreme weather across the country, especially for our siblings in Texas has thrown millions of lives into chaos and uprootedness with a deeper understanding that what was was not ready for what needs to be in this new time. Our churches too are in liminal space. New Life Presbyterian in between pastoral leadership with questions about what to do with buildings how to stay together as connected community, and what new models of ministry might look like. First Presbyterian of Warren as well, on the edge of hopefully returning soon to the sanctuary, we wonder what have we learned from this past year and what we wanna take forward. How can we remain a vital congregation for the sake of loving and serving our community? The Presbytery of Detroit and the Synod of the Covenant, both in times of transition, as well with transitional leadership after challenging disruptive events. We are on the edge of something new in so many facets of our lives and lives together as community. It's exhausting and overwhelming and exciting and invigorating all at the same time, all jumbled together. Friends, the good news though is this that the breadth of scripture tells us that it is in these liminal moments that God meets us again and again. 
This is a time that is right for the spirit's presence, a disruptive time that opens us up to a deeper understanding of who God is, how deep God's love for us is, how deep God's love for the whole created world is. God meets us again and again on the edge of things and promises to stay with us, to not abandon us as we fumble our way in often very ungraceful ways to the other side. This week, I'd invite you to slow down and take some time to reflect. Where are the edges in your life right now? And how is God meeting you there? Amen. I see we have another few guests who have joined us and I'd invite them to unmute themselves. And I think Kevin is going to pin so we can spotlight. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Today, we have the extraordinarily special honor of welcoming Governor Gretchen Whitmer to our worship service today as a guest, as a leader in our community, and as a sister in faith. And there, during this time, we have such a unique opportunity to worship with people who we might not normally worship with, including whole other church communities, people from across the country, and even elected officials. So such is the miracle of Zoom. And Madam Governor, we welcome you here today in the grace and love of the one whom we gather to worship. So I know you wish to bring your greetings. I'd invite you to do so now. All right. Well, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate it. And First Presbyterian, I'm so glad to be with all of you. Happy Sunday. I hope that in Warren, the sun is shining brightly as it is here in Lansing. Um, and I am, I'm very, very happy to be with you. It is, um, it is so good for my soul to connect and it's been very hard for all of us over the last 12 months where we can't connect in person as we would prefer to but i am grateful for zoom uh, because at least i can see your faces and and hear the message today and i'm i'm so pleased to be with you it's been a tough year it's been very hard with loss and hardship and fear and worry and yet i am optimistic about where we are in this moment and where we are headed. We were fortunate enough to host the president here in Michigan on Friday, and I show, got an opportunity to tour and show him Portage, Michigan, where the Pfizer vaccine has been rolling out, and it's kind of been a, a epicenter of hope. And I think what is on the horizon our days will get shorter, the weather will get warmer, vaccines will become more plentiful, and we'll have more opportunities to safely gather with our loved ones and, and our fellow parishioners and our families and our coworkers um, as we get further into this year. And so I just want you to know, I, I, my faith has sustained me through this, your prayers, and my, I hope you know that I pray for you as well, as, a, as well. I never would have imagined what 2020 could bring. And yet that's true for every single one of us. Um, and I know that my burden feels heavy some days, but I know it's lighter than that, which many carry in our state. And that's what keeps me centered on the work. So I am just so grateful to be here with you um, and look forward to the moment where we can see one another in person. Thank you so much, Madam Governor. Um, you have led the state through a very challenging year and you have um, had professional and personal challenges this year. I wonder what from your own faith or your own background, what has sustained you this year? Maybe it's a hymn or it's a scripture or if it is just something from your own faith tradition that has helped you through this year. Oh, that's a, I love that question. So, um, you know, I, I'll just say this. I am named after my two grandmothers, Gretchen and Esther. And um, both were phenomenal, remarkable women who had a, made a big, were, were a big part of my life for most of my life. I was very fortunate to have my, both my grandmothers around for a long time. And not, not, neither of them is around any longer, but their legacy is. And I think of them individually, but I also think of 
the woman for whom my grandmother Esther was named. Um, and, and the incredible, um, work that she did in her life to save others. And when times can be tough and they have been, um, it is that perspective and lesson that I think helps, helps me, um, try to do what I can to live up to that. Day. Yeah. A powerful woman, Esther. That's awesome. Um, many in our congregation have already received the vaccine and we're so grateful and excited to see folks get it. I wonder though, what beyond the vaccine and the decrease in numbers, what is giving you hope during this specific time, maybe even this week, a sign of hope you've seen? Well, I, I have to tell you, um, I have met and talked with so many people who have gotten the vaccine and the relief, you know, the tears of relief, um, I think are, are just, that, that gives me an incredible amount of hope. Um, watching, I, you know, communities come together um, to support one another. Being with the, all of you, that gives me hope. You're connecting, using technology. When we can't do it safely in person, you've, you've gotten creative and smart and use technology to, to help one another. And in times of crisis, that, that faith and sense of community is really important. And so you give me inspiration and hope too. Thank you. And our congregation is passionate about issues of hunger and homelessness. Every year for the past few years, we've joined with the, our neighboring mosque to provide a safe uh, week of warmth here in our church. And uh, we work together on that. This year, the guests are at a hotel. Um, but I am wondering, what is there something we can do as a congregation to enact greater change for our community? especially around issues of hunger and homelessness, something beyond just providing a place to stay and some meals. What is it that we might do? Well, you know, I know we, we try not to mix too much politics with, with our faith, but you can't separate, right? I, right. When you live your values, that you live your values in all, all facets of your life. And so um, I, would, I would bring to your attention that under the last administration in Washington, D.C., under the Trump administration, our congressional delegation um, voted and sent $5 billion to the state of Michigan. And our legislature hasn't yet given us the authority to spend those dollars and deploy them. Some of that uh, money is, well, some is for vaccine rollout. Some is for helping our kids get back in school safely. Some is to help some struggling businesses. But there is resources, real resources in there to help people keep a roof over their heads who are struggling with potential eviction, um, to help people who haven't had a job and, and need some more assistance to get through this trying time so they can put food on the table. So th this goes to the core of the mission that you were just sharing with me. And, and if we could deploy those, that would be make a, an impression, not just in, in, you know, in Warren, but all across the state. And your voices could be very helpful in that, contacting your state representative and your state senator to encourage them to move that COVID recovery plan um, so we can get these resources that are here for Michigan to use into to help people in this moment. Thank you so much. And I thank you for being here with us today. I want to thank um, the governor's director of faith-based and urban affairs, Mr. Dan Williams, for setting up this time for us as well. And you are welcome to stay and continue worshiping with us, but we know you have many places to be. Um, so we thank you so much for being with us and we will be holding you and all of our elected officials in our prayers as we continue through this time. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Well, friends, that was something quite memorable. <laughs> <laughs> But as we continue in worship, let us join together in our affirmation of faith. We believe in a God who is everywhere and right here, bigger than the sky and in the smallest details, all at once and in every mo moment. We believe in, that God meets us where we are 
in heartbreak and high hopes at round crowd, <clears throat> around crowded tables and in quiet homes, in joy and in suffering, in loneliness and in connection, in sanctuaries and in living homes, in marches and in waiting room. We believe that nothing we do or leave undone can distance us from God's love. God is forever drawing us close and pulling us in again and again. God meets us where we are and invites us into wholeness. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Friends, I want to share with you just news of our life together and ways that you could get involved in the life of our church. We have our reflections time on Tuesday. It's a place on Zoom just to share with one another, to reflect on a story together, uh, and that gets sent out in our weekly email. We have our week of warmth, as I mentioned, with the governor coming up Sunday, February 28th to March um, 3rd. No, that should be March 6th, not 3rd, March 6th. Um, we are scheduled to provide 175 breakfasts and lunches daily to guests um, who are staying with the welcome, with, sorry, <laughs> with the uh, McRest and the Warming Center, Macomb County Warming Center at a, at a local hotel. So we need volunteers to sign up. I think New Life, we have you scheduled for March 6th. If you wanna sign up and help, March 6th is your date and Bill Bowman is your guy to see about that. Um, and First Church, I think Kevin is gonna share a link in the comments with our sign up genius for that. We also need, so maybe this week, we just focus in on this as we go to the store. Um, we need quarters and detergent pods and dryer sheets because they are all um, having to do their own laundry and need about 450 and quarters in order to do that. So uh, if you could go out and pick that up, we can use as many as we can get and we'll be putting little packets together for that. Um, we need men's underwear. We're looking for $10 dollar store gift cards and then toilet paper and Kleenex. So those are the things we're focusing on. Maybe jot them down. I'll send them out in our weekly email this week, but um, our, I'll send out times too when our church is open where you could drop that off. So this is what we wanna focus in on this week to make our week a real success. We also have Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We're still in the book of Acts, which is challenging and awesome. We'd invite you to join us for that. And on Mondays and Wednesdays, we are on Facebook Live at 8 p.m. for our time of prayer and reflection. Friends, freely we have received, and so freely let us give. I'd invite you to send your offering uh, to the office by check, or you can go to firstofwarren.com slash give. And I know Kevin's putting that in the comments. And Bill, uh, Bill Bowman is putting New Life's link in the comments as well. Um, so those are ways to give. Oh. The other announcement that what it wasn't in there that I mentioned at the beginning, we also have our annual meeting for First Presbyterian Church of Warren right after this. And we need at least 16 people to make a quorum. So please stay on. I know we have some people in the sanctuary too. Um, so please stay and hang out. There's a really cool video uh, that shows the work from this past year. So please stay for that. Stan, will you please lead us in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving? Gracious God, we dedicate to you not only these gifts, but also ourselves in deep gratitude for your call on our lives, your guidance in baptismal journey, and for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others. Accept what we bring for your, your own purposes. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. As we enter into this time of prayer, I'd invite you to place any prayer requests that you have in the comments or chat uh, so we can lift those up together.
Friends, let us join together in prayer. Holy God, we pray that you would empower us with courage and faithfulness as we embark on this Lenten journey. We seek renewal and restoration during these 40 days. Help us to remember Jesus's faithfulness in the wilderness, tempted by Satan. Be with us in our temptation. Let your grace follow us and go before us in each step of this journey. Enable us to accept spiritual disciplines for this journey. Let us pray daily and be especially attentive to the needs of others and to our own needs. God of the nations, we pray for peace with justice throughout the world so that all your children may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. Move the hearts of leaders throughout the world to hear the cries of the poor and hungry and to ensure a rightful share of the resources needed to sustain life. We pray especially this day for the state of Michigan, for our governor and for all elected officials, that they may be filled with your wisdom, compassion and justice. Give them strength and endurance as they lead us through these challenging times. We pray too this day for our siblings in Texas. May you guide hearts and hands and funds to those in need as they begin to rebuild their lives. And as we continue to grapple with overwhelming pandemic challenges, we pray that you would grant special measures of strength and endurance to healthcare workers and other essential workers who labor on the front lines of this struggle. And we pray for all who are now facilitating vaccination and for those who are providing the vaccines. We pray for your comfort for all who are sick and for all who have lost loved ones. We pray to the prayers of this gathered community for Lori's son, Grant, and his roommate who are recovering from COVID, for Bill's daughter, Callie, that the doctors can figure out and mitigate her symptoms, for Mark Rosman, Al Brown, Shirley Brown and all in the hospital, for Dave, for healing for Jerry, for Laura starting chemo, prayers for the elderly, Thanksgiving for safe travels, for family, for Mary Jo's sister Kathy and brother-in-law Tim who are struggling with illness, for Vince's coworkers, for those who feel isolated, for neighbors, for a neighbor's family, for Val, for Bob's 81-year-old sister, for all who are weary, for Priscilla's friend Sally, for John's sister-in-law Jory, for the family of Daryl Gaston who died unexpectedly, for a change in attitude, for Dan, for the family of Kevin Binkley, for Kevin Kay, who is recovering from COVID. Are there other prayers, Kevin, on Facebook? Not seeing any. Okay. Holy God, grant us all wisdom and courage for the living of this hour. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, unmuted, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven. hallowed be thy name. Be thy name. Thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, be done. Be done. Be done. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 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 Forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. temptation. Deliver us from evil. 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 That is the kingdom. Amen. The power of war. The glory of our prayers forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our sending him is Lord, who throughout these 40 days.
Friends, this week I'd invite you to pause and look for the edges, those liminal spaces in your own life and see if God is meeting you there. Remember, you do not go into this week alone for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Remember to please stay on following the post loop so we can send new life into breakout room and we can have our annual meeting. Take a moment. Okay, so I put, I'm going to stop the share for a minute so we can sort out new life folks. I put the annual paper, a link to the meeting papers in the meeting or in the, in the chat, there's a link to it. Yes. Um, I, did the, I did the room already. You got the room. Cool. Okay. Okay. Let me stop Facebook live. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> and I'm going to stop the recording too. Okay.